So inside of this box is the greatest, the best laser that money can buy. And you knew it wasn't gonna be that easy because there is no one laser that is perfect for every single person. But I do wanna help you in this video figure out what would be under that box for you. All right, so let's pretend that you have walked into the laser store that is full of all of the different lasers that you can possibly buy. It's super easy to get very overwhelmed and have no idea where to start because prices can range everywhere from 200 bucks all the way up to literally over 10 grand. So I'm gonna walk you through the process that I would use if I'm trying to figure out the best laser for you. And that's just going to be a series of questions. And full disclosure, right at the jump, I am an affiliate for pretty much all of these companies. I do like to think that since I'm an affiliate for all of them, uh, it helps me be not as biased, but feel free to not click an affiliate link. The very first thing that I want you to think about is what are you actually trying to engrave or cut? And if the answer is pretty much anything other than metal, we are going to forget an entire category of laser lasers that we're going to come back to here in a minute. It's probably something like wood or acrylics you're looking to engrave and cut. So the next question is, what is your budget? And your budget really is going to have the biggest impact, especially on the lower end, on the type of machine that you can get. So we're going to split this budget into a few different price points. The first is going to be sub $1,000 machines. Now that probably is a pretty high mark to actually start at, but there's some pretty good options even at the few hundred dollar level. That's because pretty much all of these machines under a grand are going to be diode lasers. And what do you know, we've got one right here. Specifically, this is the X-Tool D1. We'll talk about it in a second, but I want to give you some quick pros and cons of these machines in general. Uh, first is uh, it is pretty portable. So you can see I can just pick this up. And despite it being fairly portable, pretty easy to move around, it actually has a really good work area. So normally these have a work area of 400 by 400 millimeters. That's kind of the standard. And the laser is generated by a laser diode. This is where the actual laser beam is made. A lot of these machines actually have multiple laser diodes diodes inside of it, they combine them together, they make a more powerful laser. Because you can get ranges of these machines anywhere from like five watts all the way up to 40 watts. Once you're hitting the 20 to 40 watt range, you're gonna get over a thousand dollars, so keep that in mind. Uh, but I really think like 10 watts is a pretty good sweet spot for these machines. If you're wanting to do a little bit of cutting, if you're mostly wanting to engrave, you can actually keep it at the lower end in terms of power, because as you step up in power, you're adding more of those diodes together and the beam size is going to get a little bit bigger as a result. So the 40 watt laser diode is not going to give you as fine of an engrave as you could get with like a five watt diode. But if you're wanting to cut, laser diodes can definitely do it. In the description, I've got links to tons of reviews that I've done. If you actually want to see tests that I've done with these machines. In general, I would say you're not going to do much cutting over a quarter of an inch thick of wood. Specifically, I do a lot of like birch plywood uh, and then basswood is super popular. You can get some pretty thick stuff of that. But if you're wanting to cut out a lot of parts that are thick diodes are really not going to be an option. But if you want to do pretty thin stuff, including acrylics, and if you want to engrave a whole bunch of materials, these are great options. Now there's really two big cons with these machines. First is the fact that this is not enclosed. So this is just open air and the laser light that comes out of this is actually visible. Usually laser diodes are like in the 450 nanometer range. And if you're looking at this chart, you can see that this is visible. And that's important because not only do you need to protect yourself from the laser beam itself, so it could like bounce off stuff. So you want to be careful. But if you just have this out in the open, all of the light that this generates is going to be all over the place. So you always want to have eye protection so I've got some right here. And this is especially important for these machines. And pretty much all of these machines will come with some type of eye protection. The diode ones will have some type of coating on it that helps block out some of the light. So you're not going to hurt your eye. But this is being open air makes it a lot more dangerous, not only to your eyes, but then also to your like environment that you're working in because all of the dust, all of the debris, the smoke, the soot, all that kind of stuff, depending on what you're working with, it's just going to be out in the open air. Now, a lot of these companies sell enclosures that go along with this, but pretty much all of those are going to be an additional purchase. Now, a few other things you won't see on machines like this is you normally won't see like the fancy cameras and positioning that you're going to see on some of the higher end CO2 machines. Since it's not a full 
enclosure, you don't have the really nice safety mechanism of just having a full lid. So whenever the lid opens up, the machine cuts off. This does have some safety stuff where like if you bump it around, it's got I think like a gyroscope, it's gonna cut off. And typically you won't be able to control these wirelessly. So you're gonna have to connect them physically to a computer. On um, pretty much all of the lasers I use, other than when we talk about the fibers here in a second, I use Lightburn and pretty much all of these dive machines now support it. Lightburn is my favorite piece of software that I use with these. It takes a little bit of time to learn and shameless plug, I actually have a full course if you want to learn how to use Lightburn with these machines and get them dialed in. There's also some free software like Laser Gerbil that you can use. And a lot of these companies are actually starting to create their own software as well, including X tool. All right, so let's get into the recommendations. And yes, I am wearing a different shirt because what I did before wasn't in focus. But my recommendations are still going to stay the same. The first is going to be the cheapest laser that you can get of any single category we talk about. This is coming in at two hundred dollars. This is the Alfero 1 or 2. Now the Alfero 2 is actually my recommendation because it is going to be in this form factor. So you're going to get like a full gantry. It's a good size. And it's also 10 watts. So it's not like on the super low end in terms of wattage. And the next step is actually a machine I haven't had a chance to test, but I have checked out a lot of their CO2 units. And that is from Ohmtech. This is the Ohmtech B10, also a 10 watt unit. This is 550 bucks. From what I can tell, it's going to be a little bit more in line with X tool in terms of build quality. It's just going to be a nicer machine overall. Uh, the other stuff from Omtech is great and we're going to talk more about them here in a second. So I would encourage you guys to check that out. I am getting one of those machines soon. So there should be a full review of that here on the channel. And then when we get on the higher end of the budget, most of the time I recommend people going with either X tool, which is this unit or Atom stack. Atom stack tends to be cheaper than the X tool units for like comparable specs. And sometimes they even have a little bit more than what you get with X tool. Overall, I do like X tool in terms of their build quality. It's just a little bit nicer in terms of fit and finish. And then Xtool software that they make is nice. But in general with Atomstack and Xtool, there's gonna be a lot of different options in terms of the power of the laser diode. So basic can go all the way from five watts up to 40 watts. So depending on how much power you want and specifically how much you want to spend, you can find something that is going to fit for you. There's a couple other diode companies out there as well. I've done reviews of their machines in the past. That's going to be Sculpt Fun and Niji. Both also have lots of different options, but more or less, they're pretty much the same type of machine. So I tend to steer people towards Atomstack or Xtool, or if you're going on a budget, going with Otor. Now we're going through a ton of names and prices and companies. And in making this video, I actually put together all of these into like one big chart. We can kind of compare them side by side. If you guys want to see that, I have a link for it down below. I'll also include any promo codes I currently have with these companies to help you guys save some money as well. So let's move into our next price range. This is going to be from a thousand to two thousand bucks. And I'll show you a good example of one of those machines. And that is nothing. I call this the no man's land in terms of budget for lasers, because you're kind of getting into a transition between high powered diode lasers and then low powered CO2 lasers. So even though you can get all the portability of a diode laser, once you get into those higher powers, especially those 40 watts, having a full enclosure is a pretty big deal because you're going to be making a lot of smoke, a lot of dust, but you really can't get into like the practical CO2 range until you get over 2000 bucks. Other than a 40 watt CO2 unit that a lot of people have referred referred to as the K40. This started out as really a hobby unit that people would upgrade over time. So you'd have to do a lot of tinkering to get it to work. Specifically, Omtech actually provides you a unit that has a lot of those upgrades already built in. You can actually get that for under a thousand bucks, but it's pretty limited in terms of work area. It's actually gonna be smaller than your standard diode unit, but we can move to the next category. All right, next up is our craziest range. And this is our 2000 to $10,000 machine. And I'll explain why we have that big of a range here in a second, but let me get an example. These guys are not portable and these all are going to be CO2 machines. So we have a range of 2000 all the way up to 10 grand and to help dial in like what is going to be the best option for you. I'm going to ask you two different questions. First is like, what is the material size? So how big of something are you trying to cut slash engrave? And how important it just being like fancy. So like having all the bells and whistles, like cameras and autofocus and all that kind of stuff. Because depending on how each of those are weighted, your price is going to change. And you kind of have a different category of machine as a result. So let's start at the 
lowest category. This is gonna range from 2,000 all the way up to about 4,000. I like to call these your budget industrial CO2 machines because they typically are very big in terms of material size, but there's really not many bells and whistles. That's not what this is. It's actually what's right over there. This style machine was actually the very first machine that I bought from eBay that kind of started this whole laser journey. This week we're talking about this 50 watt Chinese laser and whether it was a good idea. Including my current machine that I use the most, which is a 60 watt manual focus unit from Ohm Tech. And the big reason for that is it just has a really big work bed. So you're not gonna get things like integrated cameras or autofocus. And with CO2 machines, you're gonna need two things that go along with it. And one of those is a chiller, specifically a water chiller, because there is a glass tube, which on this machine is about this big, and water is run around that tube to be able to keep the temperature down. Now, some units will have that internal, well, specifically these desktop units we'll talk about here in a second. But with the bigger machines, that's going to be an external unit. Whether you actually buy a dedicated chiller or you do like I did at the very beginning and you just have like a fish pump and a little tub that just pumps water through it, that works. But no, that's gonna be something that's like hanging off the unit and you're also gonna need some type of compressor because pretty much all of your lasers, you're gonna to want to have air assist. And then all air assist is, is just a stream of air that's going right where you are engraving or cutting. It's helped putting out any flare ups that might happen, but it also helps keep your cuts clean. With these desktop style units, that's integrated as well. But with the bigger machines, that's going to be an external compressor that you're also gonna have with that. So the pros of these budget industrial style machines are the size, but that's also the big drawback is just that they are really big. Not only the machine, but all the other stuff that you hook up to it. But another pro is since they are so big, you can actually get some pretty good size laser tubes in the back. So the ones I recommend have a range of 40 to 80 watts. And let's actually go through those right now. I've talked about Ohm Tech before with their diode machine, but this is what I really know Ohm Tech as. It's kind of your budget industrial style CO2 provider. Specifically ones I would check out is their 50 watt unit. This is the MF. 1220 and their naming convention just means that MF is manual focus and 1220 is just 12 inches by 20 inches and then dash 50 so 50 watts that comes in at 2200 bucks and again going back down to the no man's land when you're talking those higher power diode units we're in like the 15 to 16 hundred dollar range by spending a few hundred dollars more we're getting into a good size co2 unit that you can do a good bit more with a couple other options to look at going back to their manual focus line with ohm tech is the MF1624 slash 60. That's pretty close to the machine that I actually have. Then also you can check out their AF. So this is autofocus, meaning that it is gonna automatically focus the laser lens for you. If things are out of focus, it's just not gonna cut or engrave as well. With manual focus machines, you'll have to measure it yourself or you'll have like a little spacer that you put in there to figure it out. With autofocus, manufacturers do it a bunch of different ways, but normally it's with like a touch probe. So it touches it, then it goes down and focuses it and you're good to go. So the Ohm Tech AF autofocus 2020 28-60, that's 3,200 bucks. That's a good one to look at. And then another company that I like to look at in this range is Monport. And they look pretty similar from the machines you are finding from Ohm Tech. I would guess they're probably coming from some of the same factories overseas, but they're also good options for this price range. Specifically, they're 60 to 80 watt machines. You're gonna look at 2,300 all the way up to 4,500 bucks. So a little bit past our $4,000 range. All right, so our next price range is going to be from three all the way up to $7,000. This is going to be a smaller work area, but more bells and whistles. Specifically, we're talking about these desktop CO2 machines. If you've ever looked for a laser online, you probably have seen an ad for one of these. And a few years ago, that might have been Glowforge. Right now, this might be with this one. This is the Ohm Tech Polar or some other companies like Flux and Xtool. Usually, they are a lot more approachable, so they're going to have have things like cameras and autofocus. Sometimes they'll even have their own custom software. And instead of like those budget industrial machines where you had to have a water chiller and a compressor all external, basically everything is enclosed inside of this box. They usually have pretty nice glass lids. You can actually see the camera is right there. But again, the big drawback with these machines is the fact they're going to have a reduced work area. Sometimes you'll find machines with a pass-through slot, meaning that the front and the back will have slots that you can remove and so you can put your material all the way through it, but still you're not gonna have just like the raw work area size like you will with those budget industrial machines. So really I go this route, if someone comes to me, they're like, hey, I can spend a pretty good amount of money and I just want something that I can pick up 
and go. It's gonna be fairly easy to use, it's gonna be powerful, and it's going to be safe. Because these are the only types of machines I personally recommend putting into classrooms, specifically my Glowforge, actually donated to our local elementary school. Uh, and that was basically the only machine I had at the time that I was safe doing that because they definitely take safety seriously. And even though it does take up a lot of space, you saw me try to bring it over here and it's heavy, it still doesn't take as much space as those other style CO2 machines. All right, so then in this category, which ones do I recommend? So going from low to high on the budget, first is going to be the Gweek Cloud Knox or the G-Wick or the G-Machine as I like to call it. I have reviewed their bigger machine, so the G-Wick Cloud Pro two. Uh, that comes in at $3,200, but the Knox is like a scaled down version of that from the best that I can tell, and that's going to be $2,500. So that's going to be the only one you're going to be able to get into under $3,000, even though I know it ranges like three to seven. The next step is going to be the Ohmtech Polar. So this machine right here, this is 3000 bucks. And the Polar and the GWIC Cloud, the best that I can tell, they're pretty much the same machine. I think GWIC actually supplies those machines to Ohmtech. And then from there, we have a pretty big bump in price because the next one is going to be the X-Tool P2. This one came out earlier this year. I did a full review of this machine and this one more than likely you have seen it. But the X-Tool P2 is a nice machine. It has a lot of bells and whistles. It's got multiple cameras. You can do like 3D, meaning that the focus will actually change as you're going up and down material. You have this like crazy conveyor belt system and this riser that you can get as an add-on. Just overall, it's a nice, nice package. It's gonna be easier to use than even machines like this. You still would have to use Lightburn with GWIC. It also has a bigger work area than these machines. And then going up from that is going to be the Flux Hexa. I've done a full review on that one as well. Uh, this one is just nice overall. From the build to everything about it, it's just a very, very solid machine. The Flux doesn't seem to be as popular as some of the other companies that are out there. Uh, you might have seen the Beam or the BMO that was kind of their previous machines. They are less powerful. The BMO specifically is a pretty small CO2 unit, so that could be an option if you want to check out. But the Flux Hexa is also expensive. This comes in at seven grand. And finally, there's a machine that's coming that I am super excited about it. I think it's going to actually be the best built, nicest. And this is actually from Thunder, who we haven't talked about, but they make very nice CO2 machines. And we'll get to them here in a second. So look out for the review for that machine. But if it's priced like the other Thunder machines, it's also going to be on the top end for these desktop CO2s. All right, so our next price range is going to be six to 10,000. I know we have like some overlapping ranges, but these are gonna be machines that have high work area as well as high usability slash high tech and features. And these I like to call the high end CO2s. So most of these manufacturers are still importing machines in from overseas, but they're doing a lot of work either stateside or over in Europe. So these machines are basically the same form factor as our budget CO2s, but the components inside of them are going to be a good bit nicer, which is gonna give you more reliability, usually longer warranties. And with pretty much all of these, they are going to be US based companies. And so all the support you're gonna get is going to be stateside or even like on the Europe side of things as well. Now there's two companies I recommend in this category and that is going to be Thunder as well as Aeon. Aeon I don't have hands-on experience with, but their mirror line specifically, so like the mirror five and the mirror seven is 6,000 bucks and $7,500 respectively. But basically once you get into their line, you're gonna be able to vary it by the power and the machine size and your price is gonna go up from there. In fact, their Nova 10 comes in at $12,000. So you can definitely get high prices with these machines. But Thunder, I do have hands-on experience with. In fact, the Thunder 24 is right over there, right off camera, but I've done a full review on it. And I said it at the time, and it is still the case, that's the nicest machine I've ever used inside of my shop. It's got super nice components, the build quality is top notch, and their support and their team is just great. But again, that does come with a higher price. So the Nova 24 is actually the cheapest machine that you can get, and that is $7,400. And then as you step it up, you're gonna get into things like the Nova 35, which is just under 10 grand. And when I've recommended those machines to people, it's really if you are actually running a business and you have products you're already selling, and you know that having a higher quality machine that's more reliable, that's faster, that's gonna give you a better end product over and over again, it's just gonna help you grow your business. And last but not least, in this entire category of CO2 machines, these are going to be our pro 
machines. Uh, pro, like straight up professional, these are going to be the nicest that you can get and also the most expensive, specifically Trotic and then Epilog. These are US based. They do a lot of their manufacturing inside of the US as well. You're really not gonna get into any of these machines for less than $10,000. So the Fusion Maker 12, which is Epilog's like budget machine and it's $10,000. But you can also look at the Fusion Edge line, which is gonna step it up from there. And then Trotic is another great company to look at. Okay, so those are our diode and our CO2 lasers for pretty much anything that you want to engrave other than metal. Let's come all the way back to the beginning and answer the question, what do you need to get if you do want to do metal? Now this is specifically for engraving. If you're wanting to cut metal, that's a whole nother conversation. We're already going through a ton of options. You might wanna put labels or barcodes on part. You might want to name them or sell products like dog tags or rings or necklaces, all that kind of stuff. Metal is super popular. And when we talk about metal, we actually need to expand into a different type of wavelength. So here's a chart of the spectrum of light. We've already talked about diodes and we've already talked about CO2s, but there's a subset of category inside of infrared light that is great for metal, specifically the 1095 nanometer, somewhere around that range. And a lot of people refer to that as fiber machines. And specifically, they look kind of like this is a smaller version of probably one of the more popular industrial style machines. Now these work a little bit different than your standard blue light diode in that in this case, the laser is generated down here. It goes through this tube, which is fiber optic, which I believe that's where the actual fiber name comes from. So the tube, not necessarily the diode laser itself. And then it comes up here and it's reflected down and it shoots all over your work bed. Now this is an entirely different form factor than our diodes or even our CO2s because those are all on a gantry. So your actual either laser diode moves around or just the laser head with the mirrors also move around. So they have a big work area, but they can't be as fast because you're physically moving it back and forth. In this case, there's an actual gavetometer right here. And all that is is a lens slash mirror that moves around really, really fast. So it's able to move your beam super quickly across your work area. And here are a few just real time demos of this thing going, but that all comes at a cost in terms of your work area. So you really aren't gonna get much bigger than 12 by 12 inches on machines that are like this. Now these machines can get kind of complicated and there's a lot of different versions, uh, but we're gonna kind of split this into three different categories in terms of price. And this guy actually did a recent review of and it's a pretty good example of what you might get. This is a machine from Laser Picker, the Laser Picker 4. And most of the machines in like category will come in a form factor like this, meaning that they're all one unit that is put together. That's compared to more of the expensive machines that we'll see here in a second. We're gonna have units like the Atomstack M4. This is gonna be the cheapest unit you can get, and that is at a thousand bucks. And then the GWIC G2, which is kind of similar to this setup, and the Monport GP20, also kind of similar to this. And the GWIC is 1500, and the Monport is 2. So those are more standard, but this guy is actually in a sort of a class of its own along with the X-Tool F1, which I actually think is a better machine than this, but they're unique because they have two lasers inside. So you have the 1064 nanometer wavelength light that is good for metal, as well as your traditional blue diode, which is about 400 nanometers, and it can switch between those two. So you still get the benefit of having the high speed, but you can do both different types with the same machine. Now I actually would recommend the X-Tool F1 over this machine. It's a little bit bigger as well as faster and it's only a hundred bucks more. So the laser picker four is 1700 and the X tool F1 is 1800. Next, let's move into like the medium budget category. And these are going to be the bigger units that you can find from Ohmtech or Monport. So just like they make the larger industrial style CO2 units, you can also get a larger industrial style fiber unit. We're gonna get a bigger work area. It may not have as many bells and whistles, but it's also not gonna be quite as expensive as the higher ends. And specifically, I would look at the Ohmtech FM 4343-20 that comes in at 2,700 bucks. That more or less is the machine I've done a review on as well as the Monport 20 watt, which is 2,500 bucks. And another great option is from Cloudray. I've done a review of a different type of Cloudray unit in the past, uh, but this is a great manufacturer if you're wanting to get in fiber. They have a ton of different options. On the cheaper end for them is gonna be the Cloudray QS. This is uh, 30 watts and this is 3,300 watts. Bucks. And another one in that category is actually a version of this right here. That is from 3P Lasers. This is the EM Smart One. This is a great form factor, a bigger machine than this. And this comes in at $2,200. So on the higher end is when things start to get 
kind of crazy. If we won't get deep, a lot of times you're gonna see MOPA fiber lasers, which basically means you can modify a lot of different things about the laser beam itself. This machine right here is actually the MOPA machine from EM Smart. This is actually $5,200, but also you can look at like the Aurora line from Thunder. That's great as well. And just to throw one more kind of last rent, so we've kind of really only had two main categories. We've had fiber machines for anything metal, and then we've had diodes and CO2s for anything other than metal. Now there's another type of laser called UV lasers. These are gonna be on the low end of the light spectrum. The big benefit of those is unlike, especially like a CO2, which a lot of times is actually burning your material when it engraves. This isn't really gonna heat up the material, so you're gonna be able to mark on stuff you just couldn't with the other options, specifically like plastics or even resin. A lot of times they will come in a form factor kind of like this, in that they're still using a galvanometer, but if you see UV on it, know that that's not a machine really for metal. You can do brass with it, but that's really not set up for doing straight metal. And right up there is a full playlist of all of the machines I've reviewed in the past that I would recommend if you wanna dive deeper into individual details about these machines. If you do wind up getting one of these machines, I would love to know. Until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.